Hey everyone, Scott Cunningham, make a Scotty business. Today I want to talk to you guys about self-censorship and why unfortunately once every week or so I end up deleting a video that I that I do because of self-censorship. And and I want to share the things that I self-censor on and why because I want to be as completely transparent with you guys as possible. I think free speech is huge. Unfortunately, I don't live in a country where free speech actually is 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 legislated. Um, and I don't actually have those those rights. And not only that, it's the reaction from the unhinged left that so many of us fear. And someone like myself who could easily be uh, deplatformed and, you know, I don't have the platform. I don't have the luxury of, of, of getting banned off of legacy platforms and still being all right. I mean, I do decent on my blockchain platforms and uh, crypto monetized social platforms and free speech alternatives, etc. But I know that it could affect my actual job and different things like that. So again, with this video, I'm going to be as focused on the facts and not my opinion and really just talking about these very generally and why I can't talk about them, which is mostly based off of the way I look, unfortunately. But I want to dive into these topics, just briefly sharing why I don't talk about them. And I'd like to hear from you guys what you think about this. And um, yeah, so let's dive right into it. The first one is a biggie. It is the idea of racism and class oppression. Well, not the idea of the conflation. So people, there's a large portion of people who think you can only be racist if you are white and you can't be racist if you are not white. Well, racism by definition is prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism, antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's race is superior. By definition, anyone can be racist if they think they are better than someone else because of their race. That is a terrible um, belief to hold, obviously. Denounce all races and racism. It is bad. It is not okay. No, barely anyone is going to actually support racism. And what I see today is tons of people being called racist for things that aren't racist. And people attributing racism to class and very in line with this, white privilege being used as a way to shut down uh, speakers on the other side. Saying you have white privilege, thus you can't speak is racism. It's discriminating someone based on their um, on their race. But a lot of people will deny that and say that's not racism because they are privileged. Well, if we pr if we actually talk about the privilege debate, you can be any race and be just to totally poor, totally poverty stricken, not able to help or contribute in any means, and you need help. Um, so like people say male privilege. Well, oh no, we'll get into that in a sec. That's a that's a whole other thing. So white privilege isn't really a thing. It is class privilege that they're talking about, but then only attributing to to white people because statistically and again these are all facts this is not opinions uh statistically asians make significantly more money men and women than uh white men and women though statistically white men and women typically make more than the rest of the other races as well as asians make way more than them as well but whenever we talk about uh like white privilege which again is really class privilege is what they should be talking about. Uh, Cause then they omit the fact that Asians are actually doing way better than everyone else as well. Um, and then there's also a huge discrimination towards Asians because they're doing so well for universities, a very small, like a lot of Asians are rejected because they're doing too well and they need to make space for affirmative action, bringing in people who don't deserve to be there, um, but they're trying to be equitable, right? So this is really unfair for Asians because then they can only compete um, against each other. And statistically, because they have uh, a higher IQ on average, it is more challenging 
to be an Asian person and trying to get into university because you have to get a higher GPA than anyone of any other race. That is racism. Um, so the next one I have here is the feminist movement going well beyond equality. Oh, yeah. This one is hard to talk about because people will attribute like the patriarchy and, ma and male privilege and all these things that, again, we're talking about aren't really real. OK, there isn't real evidence that we live in a patriarchy. And well, I'll get to that in a sec, actually. So the feminist moving going well beyond equality. It's they're not actually going and advocating for women who don't have equality in countries uh, like third world countries. The feminist movement today is focused on injecting feminism into culture anywhere possible. So again, uh, Thor being played as a female now, a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, you know, switching it up, blah, blah, blah. Superheroes can be female too. Like, that's fine. But here's the thing, Thor is a pagan god of a religion. Now, feminism is changing religion to empower females. It starts with something simple like a religion that became a comic superhero and in the next few years, I expect to see um, female Jesus. And I'm sure a lot of people on the left are like, that's fine. Female Jesus, cool. Um, but people who are religious and Christian would probably find that offensive. In the same way that if you changed something about Muhammad as a Muslim, that would be grossly offensive and attacked, attacked, attacked. Okay, so equity doctrine, again, more craziness, and this is part of the feminist movement, part of the leftist movement. Equity doctrine is dangerous, and they're not even applying it equitably, right? Women don't want an equal amount of women bricklaying or working as a garbage person, like taking your garbage from the, from the curb or equal janitors or equal combat services or equal working on the ro oil rigs or in coal mines or whatever. They just want the top, top positions, the best positions possible. That's not real equity. And equity is a terrible, evil doctrine based out of socialism ideals. Another really great one. I said earlier that the patriarchy is a myth. We don't live in a patriarchy because if we did, men wouldn't be struggling um, at the peak rates that they are today. And the feminist movement, again, suppresses this information and says, you know, it's offensive that you're advocating for men because you're excluding women by advocating for men, which could easily be said the exact same for them and the other vice versa. Um Men have the highest suicide rates, highest addiction rates, highest incarceration, highest deaths in combat, highest deaths at work, highest um, homelessness, uh, highest amount of rape if you include prison is men as well, uh, most likely to be assaulted men, basically everything across the board. And, and the one thing that they come back with is, but what about the gender wage gap, which again, isn't real and you could you could look to science for this. It is known. Jordan Peterson explains this perfectly. It is well known in the clinical psychology um, like space that there is a massive amount of factors that go into the gender wage gap. There's so many different factors that contribute. To name a few, men are more assertive and they ask for raises. Men work much more dangerous jobs. Men work significantly more hours. It, there's there's a massive list. There's like 16 factors, I believe, but I'll uh, maybe I'll, I'll link to something explaining that because that is pretty useful to take a look at for people who are interested in that, that information. Um, but I did write a blog a while back covering all the different stats of how men are struggling and and how it's kind of ignored. There's no support. There's nothing. Um, 
as I said, most single homeless people are men. 99% of homeless uh, shelters are for women only. It's interesting, you know, uh, women by far are graduating university and college and completing and getting their degrees and diplomas at a much higher rate than men. Yet, the majority of programs only support women in, in universities and colleges. They have all these programs to support women only and the programs cannot help men, even though today men are now the ones who are the minority and they're the ones struggling. And... By and large, I mean, this could have changed a little bit over the last little bit, but the last time I checked, there was virtually no groups or programs for men only, but a massive amount for women only. It's very interesting. Um, because because this is what it really says. It's not that we actually want to help the people who are struggling. We only help a certain type of person who we are trying to push the agenda for. That's what it says. Because you're not actually trying to help the person who's struggling. Simple. Alpha and beta male perception. This is statistically factually true in the sense that there are way more MGTOW incel, um, the sexual deregulation of, like, of the marketplace, of the sexual marketplace. The you know, top 20, 30% of males are having sex with 80% of the females. And that's why you have incels, MGTOW, all this stuff happening. Now, my opinion on the situation is that, and, and I've seen many, many feminists even talk about this and be confused as to why this is happening. It's that the alpha beta male perception, feminism, and a lot of those similar ideologies push for the beta male as, uh, as as what they want but then women are not actually attracted to those qualities in a male and I've seen many many feminists come out and write about this and say well I have a perfect husband and he's the nice guy but I don't like him and I want him to cheat and this is why we have cuckolds and cucks and all this stuff it's largely because the beta male ideal is being pushed culturally to men and young men. And, and we're being told that alpha male and the idea of being an alpha male is toxic masculinity, but then women aren't attracted to the beta male. So what do you end up with? You end up with MGTOW incel, just way less, uh, families, a lot more, random sex adventures like again the the deregulation of the sexual marketplace it's um it's not good for kids it's not good for reproduction rates which apparently are getting so low that we won't be able to sustain our economies because of how low the reproduction rates are getting thus you have to have immigration to make up for that and naturally in the United States right now, they have an immigration crisis, but that's also, there's a bunch of other factors to that. But, you know, talking about the fact that naturally, mass immigration destabilizes and massively changes culture in a way that could be negative. Could be. Going on to um, use of public funds for virtue signaling. Now... I mean, it, it is factually true that this is happening, but I'm giving my opinion on this one. So recently, like where I live, they repainted a crosswalk with rainbow colors to support LGBTQ. I totally support LGBTQ, but I don't think we should spend public funds that I contribute to for vanity improvement, well, not even an improvement, for vanity changes to our society just to show support for a specific minority. And it's like, I support minorities, but we don't need to spend public money to virtue signal that we do. Having that rainbow flag doesn't stop any of the bad things that happen. And you could make the argument that it normalizes it better and it helps integrate it better. But it's like we could make functional improvements. That money could have paved... Uh, the gravel like pathway in the park so that you could actually ride a bike through the park 
that's a functional and useful improvement. And again, I fully support what they want and in and, 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 um, and that community, but I don't support virtue signaling towards them or any community. Like if they were, if they were like, okay, well, we're sorry because the education system discriminates against Asians. So we're going to put, you know, a prominent Asian person's face on the side of the university that that doesn't solve the problem. They're still being discriminated against. Don't virtue signal. Uh, the pedophilia forgiveness movement, another terrible, weird thing going on that is challenging to talk about because, for example, Facebook banned like two weeks ago, all the pages that were like against pedophiles, like catch a predator, all these things like that, um, except for the official like TV show. They they're allowing that, but they banned everything else because there's this weird pedophile forgiveness movement because of all the scandals coming out that all of these massive prominent Hollywood influencers and celebrities are pedophiles and now they're needing to save face so that they don't lose their people. Um, and again, the extreme of that would eventually be like, don't hate psychopaths for killing people. That's just, you know, how they were born. They can't help it. That's what that will. That's the extreme of what that'll get to. And that's why that's weird and terrible. Um, similar to that, the sexualization of children. Why does your eight-year-old need makeup and a bra when she doesn't have breasts, it's because you are sexualizing her to appear older to appeal to older people, uh, older men, pedophiles. It's like those two go hand in hand. Really creepy, really weird. Um, and I mean, look, I might get this video banned just because Google goes and sees me saying all of these words and they're like, holy crap, this must be all right. Um, introducing sexual education at an increasingly younger age and confusing children. Another really weird one. Not that long ago, uh, two or three weeks, maybe there was a story where a teacher accidentally assumed that a child was experiencing gender dysmorphia because he was using, uh, you know, like the, the handicap bathroom or the family bathroom or whatever, because he had a bowel issue, but the teacher assumed it was because he didn't think he was a man or like he didn't think he was a boy. So the teacher secretly kept this kid in at recess every day and was showing him all these all these things about gender dysmorphia and how you, you're probably a girl secretly. And the kid was so confused and messed up. And then finally, two weeks later, they finally tell the parents and the parents are completely distraught. The kid is upset, going to therapy now, all this like terrible terrible to be trying to introduce this kind of stuff and confusing kids at such a young age it's not it's not good <sighs> um i don't know if i talked about this before science denial you know it, it kind of coincides with a lot of these different things but science denial from the left who is uh majorly prominent in academia that's why it's very relevant because people will uh combat this and say but what about science denial um, from creationists, um, they don't teach that though. They don't, they're not teachers. They're not professors. And they're not saying, oh, well, actually evolution doesn't exist. That doesn't really happen. So that's not a problem. The science denial on the left is a problem because it's very prominent. And I see it all the time. I have friends, my, there's a university just beside where I live. And my friends who take poli sci, like I've talked about this before. It's, it's basically indoctrination what they're getting taught. And they don't have to provide evidence. They just need to say what the teacher wants to hear. And that's their entire mark. It's just ridiculous. Um, lack of personal responsibility. Um, actually, that's not too bad. I mean, I feel like if I kept talking about it, I would get some repercussions for it. But I've talked about that recently. But these are just some of the topics. Just some of. And again, nearing the end of this video... Uh, I am concerned as to whether or not this will be just massively attacked from every which way. And this is the second time doing this video because I wanted to go through and start saying this is factual, this is opinion. And just to recap, in case I missed it at any point and someone's going to try to get me on something, um, the pedophile forgiveness movement, 100% real. Facebook banned all those pages. That's a real thing. Sexualization of children. Um, that's a hundred percent a real thing. We're seeing that. And my opinion on it is that it's bad. 
Uh, the introduction of sexual education at a younger age, that's factually true. Um, and the cases we're starting to see. And here's the thing, right? There's not going to be a ton of evidence until 5, 10, 15 years when all these kids come out and say, yeah, I was like confused by my teacher or whoever or whatever because I was shown that it's like we can't just bring it in before we even know how this is going to affect anyone. And uh, that's my opinion. And uh, toxic fem femininity, toxic masculinity debate, you know, adding qualifiers. I don't even know if I touched on that. I maybe I briefly did, but adding the qualifiers to uh, to in front of you know, an identity is definitely not possible. Like, can you be a toxic homosexual? Can you be a toxic straight person? Like, what is that? You, you know, eventually you're just attacking different identities by adding negative qualifiers to them. Um, and, but yeah, the toxic masculinity and alpha beta male perception is partially my opinion, partially what the actual like the feminist community is saying and I, I i see what they say it all the time I, i'll try to find a few things to link in here so that people aren't saying i'm just saying this and this is my opinion it's not you know real uh male struggles there's a there's an insane amount of statistics and evidence to support that i'll link my old blog so people can go rage there as well um equity doctrine that's 100 percent scientific factual the feminist movement going well beyond equality, partially factual, partially my opinion. Discrimination towards uh, Asians and 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 omitting the Asian class privilege. If you were going to bring in class privilege to a debate, that is uh, fully factual, scientific, hundred percent. And and I also just want to say for that that if you try to use class privilege as a way to shut down discussion, um, you are part of the problem because discriminating based on class generally should be what the minorities are fighting against. And that's what they're using and fighting with. It's weird. Uh, and then racism versus class oppression. This is 100% factual. Just look up the definition of racism pretty easy solution but a lot of people ignore what the definition of racism is today and i don't know it's weird that's my take on all of these there's probably more things that i can't talk about i'm sure you could figure that out just by thinking through you know what are some things that really get people unhinged um yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments below i have no idea how this is going to turn out i expect the worst hope for the best We'll see how it goes. I'm Scott Cunningham, a.k.a. Scottsy Business, signing off. Cheers.